Good morning, Providence family. Good morning. Everyone's doing well this morning? Yes, sir. Tell you what, it's good to look out and see a crowd. Thank you for coming. Hey! I just want to give you a Sunday school report this morning. I'll turn over everything over to the pastor. We have 49 members present. We didn't have any visitors this morning, so we have a total of 49. I'm going to try to make it easy on my math. Uh, we have 13 contacts. We appreciate you continuing to do that. And this time last year we had 36. So as COVID, we're starting to you know, slowly gather our numbers back. So thank you to each and every one who came to Sunday school this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Lynn. I don't know if we're ever going to climb back up to what we used to be. Uh, I don't know what it takes. So we're working on it. If you're one of those that came pre-COVID, it's, this is post-COVID, I think it is, anyway. So, come on back to Sunday school. Always have such a good time. I have a lot of announcements to make. First, most and utmost, I want to remind you about our Christmas program that's on the Narky outside, <coughs> December the 19th. On that morning, we're going to have a mini cantata. The choir's going to be practicing up until that time. And uh, it's going to be good. So I want you to plan on being part of our services that morning and then that afternoon, or that evening rather, at 6 p.m. we're going to have an outdoor service. Uh, we're going to put chairs out. You can, I think you can be able to sit in your car and worship with us. Uh, it's going to be real good. We're going to have a Christmas story. We're going to have singing. We're going to have uh, a live nativity. It's going to be real good. And then I'm going to bring a short message. Well, after that, we're all coming to the fellowship hall to eat. This year's theme is a peasant's Christmas. We're going to have it. Actually, you probably would call it a simple Christmas rather than a peasant's Christmas. But it's going to be as simple and as plain as you possibly could have a Christmas. And so what we're going to do as far as food goes, we're going to have soup. We have three choices, vegetable, potato, and chili. We have bread. It says please specify what kind you're bringing, and then fruit is going to be for dessert. We'll probably have tea and water to wash it down with. So we want to uh, promote this. We're going to send flyers out to all the churches, and hopefully they'll participate in the outdoor worship and maybe come join us for fellowship inside also. Now, along that same line, I'm fixing to pass this around. Don't let me forget to do that, okay? Along that same line, we're going to have a live Christmas tree this year, okay? Uh, I need somebody, a volunteer, to go out in the woods of your neighbor's house you know, <laughs> and cut about a seven-foot tree down, okay? If you don't want to do that, if you want to volunteer to go by, but it's got to be live, okay? And we want it up by December, I think, first Sunday is the 5th, is that correct? Huh? Anybody know? Oh, December 5th is the first Sunday. That's the day we're going to have our tree in place. I do not think we have a tree stand, so we need to beg and borrow a tree stand for a live tree. And, huh? You got the cover? Thank you. We're going to put it out here. Now, it's going to have two things. First of all, everything on it has to be natural. We're going to have a popcorn <coughs> ornament going around it. We're going to have a, a, a homemade ornaments. You and your family get together and make a Christmas ornament for that day, two or three. Sunday school classes make some Christmas ornaments. Can't be anything manufactured, okay? We were going to use paper clips to hang it on. We only want to use an uh, ornament hanger. We're just we're going to make it plain. We also want to put candles. Now, I can't put little candles, of course. <laughs> so what we're going to do, I found some beautiful candles at, at, on Amazon. If somebody would like to donate, I think uh, you can buy 100 or 150 for $44. If anybody wants to volunteer to do that, let me know on the way out. But we are going to put candles on that's going to be beautiful. And that and on December the 5th, the tree will be in place and we will trim the tree that morning with the real ornaments that you have made and break. Nod your head like a billy goat. Everybody got that? All right, you understand. All right, I'm going to pass this around. We'll start it down here with John. John's going to sign up for three or four shoes. Well, I should do it twice first, right? But I'll make sure y'all put y'all things. Hey, put four five <laughs> And when it gets through the choir groups, if you'll take it down to John. Now, I need that to go all the way to the back. I need it to go over here and all the way back down to the front. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Can, can, can the ornaments be paper? Uh, I reckon paper's natural, isn't it? Yeah. That's good, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want a lot of paper ornaments. I want you to be, I want everybody to be creative, okay? So be as creative as you possibly can. All right, does that cover everything for that? 
Because of Thanksgiving, we will be having prayer service on Tuesday night this coming week, 7 o'clock. Uh, we are having choir practice, right? We will have choir practice for Kentana on Tuesday night. So if you come on Wednesday, you're going to be late. We do that because there's going to be a lot of cooking and baking here on Wednesday. So Tuesday night this coming week will be our prayer service, okay? We have elected this year to help one needy family. It's a family of four. Uh, next week's bulletin, we will have the sizes. We have mom and dad and two children. We're also going to take up a pounding for this family. Next week, I will have a box or a basket, maybe two down here at the altar, and you start bringing canned goods or anything that you'd like to do, like bags of beans and rice, whatever. And uh, if you want to know who the family is, just call me and I'll ask you, but I'm not going to make it public, okay? But I'll give you the sizes and everything and the bullets the next week, and we won't have that the Sunday or by the Sunday before Christmas, okay? If you're planning on helping money-wise, <coughs> Donating anything uh, to help buy groceries for West Virginia. I'm planning on doing the shopping this coming weekend. Uh, so if you have anything you would like to donate, here's what you need to do. Make the check out Providence Church, Ear Market for West Virginia, and then Marie will cut the check for me and we're going to buy the groceries. We're going to try to get loaded up with the groceries. Probably go to Sam's or Walmart. Somebody told me Walmart has tax-free groceries. I didn't know that. You learn something new every day, don't you? Huh? Only in Orangeburg, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to go shopping in Orangeburg and we we'll have to pay taxes on this stuff. Anyway, uh, if you'd like to help, I've had checks that's already come in and, and I thank you for those donations. And if you'd like to get we're going to buy the groceries this weekend, so give it to uh, Maria or put it in the offering plate and we will be able to do that. Okay? All right, I've got... It's already got cold, so I don't know what I wrote down here. Um, Christmas lights, I mentioned that. I mentioned the Tuesday thing. Missions project for October, November, and December. Keep a veteran warm. Will has agreed to divide the coats of what he gets in. Half is going to West Virginia, and half will be donated here. So give what you can. Adults, ladies, and children. Please, uh, if you have a lot of coats to bring, just double back them and label them so I know what they are, okay? When we get up there, as of right now, we got 60 people going and six, seven trailers. And so uh, things are getting fast and, and furious. So if you want to help with that, please uh, do so. Just bring them and put them out in the fellowship hall. Please label them so I know what they are, okay? Anything else? Oh, one more thing. How many of you do Christmas cards this year, every year? Do Christmas cards? I will have to confess to you, I do not. If you don't get a Christmas card from me, I'm not sliding you, I just slide everybody, okay? <laughs> but I'm going to take a, a special privilege this year because we're going to send Christmas cards to all of our shut ins and to the two gentlemen who was incarcerated. Their addresses are on the back of the bulletin, and so you can get those in the mail when you can. So help us with that, and they just want to be flooded with Christmas cards. It'll be a tremendous blessing to them, okay? Yes, ma'am. We're going to need volunteers for the major. That if, so if anybody wants to volunteer to be in the major outside. Okay. To be in it or put it up? No, to be in it. Okay. Like to be wise men, okay. very objective. Okay. Like While we do this, next week you make me a list and I'll pass it around and they can sign up for shepherds or whatever. If you want to volunteer in the meantime, just see us all. I think the angels are coming. The children are going to be the like animals, he said. Correct. So, the choir's going to be the angels. Right. Do you so believe I'll that? A Mary and Joseph, shepherds, and wives. Okay. Got that? This is a good looking crowd this morning. It really is. All right, anything else? I made a mistake this morning. I turned the heat on for y'all, and I'm about to die. <laughs> And I see some of y'all fanning too. I got the air on now. Okay. All right, if that's all, we're going to have Miss Lily and, and Laura, you're not saying that today. We're going to come and have our call. And welcome everybody on Facebook. Thank you for being with us. Come on, Lily. You got your singing music. I like the way you got a pair of these. Who's done that for you? Come on, Lily.
ma un viaggio di piatti. Good morning, y'all. If y'all want to stand and, and worship and lift up Jesus' name with us this morning, we are going to sing Waymaker this morning.
So we confess our sins to you. Lord, you are faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from our sins. Lord, that we pray today, dear God, for cleansing them. We pray, Lord, on behalf of others. You've heard the names that have been lifted up, Father, and many things that are going on in these people's lives. But, Lord, we know, dear God, that you have an answer for each of them. We trust and pray, dear Lord, that they would feel the power of the Holy Spirit in their life, the power and the help of the Holy Spirit right now moving upon Amen. them, Father, as they face trying times in their lives. And I ask you, Lord, to use this as an opportunity, Father, to witness to them, but let it also be an opportunity, Lord, for us to be a witness for you. Now, Lord, we ask that you meet us in this place today. The Holy Spirit is welcome. We invite him to anoint everything, the prayer, the preaching, and the singing, and just be honored and glorified in this time together. In Jesus' name, we offer this prayer and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated.
You know when you use these gadgets, <laughs> sometimes um, you can just, a touch of the finger can change everything. And the touch of the finger changed it just now, so we <laughs> sang it off. Well, well, well. Stay right on key, it well, is a bit. We can do it. And I don't think the choir even knew it there for a minute. They just all sing it and don't pay any attention to it. But, um, and I will have to say in the cantata one year, we had a, a group, we just had a whole audience full of people singing the Hallelujah Chorus. And the electricity went out. We just kept on singing. And one of my music teachers came up and told me that was the best rendition of a Hallelujah <laughs> <laughs> So we don't get upset. We just keep on going. But anyway, and I don't have a lot of the music that I have because I love for it to be Mr. Harry's fault or something. <laughs> but so much of the music that I have, I don't have it where Mr. Harry can get it. So anyway. We're going to sing, There Shall Be Showers of Blessings, page 467. Stand with me and let's sing all the more verses. <laughs>
We will excuse Miss Laurie Flake this morning. She's under the weather. She can't even talk. I think Daniel's been praying for that. <laughs>
God comes to you and I and says, I know you're a sinner, but if you will give me your sins in return, I will give you my salvation. Now that is the simplest explanation of salvation I've ever heard. You just say, God, here, take my sins. I'm giving them to you. He said, thank you. I will take all of your sins, and then I will bless you with my salvation. He told Nicodemus on the rooftop, he looked and said, Nicodemus, you've got a lot of questions, but i got one answer for you. If you will give me your questions in your life, I will turn it into salvation, and you will be born again by the Holy Spirit. He told the woman at the well, he said, listen, I know your life. I know the sins that are in your life, but I'm willing to make a trade with you. You give me all the sinfulness, all the failures of your life, the failed things that you've done, the failed marriages, the failed relationships. Give them to me, and I in turn will give you the water of life, and you will never, ever thirst again. Hallelujah. The Lord takes all of our hatred and our bitterness, and he turns it and trades it into love and forgiveness. He takes all the envy and the strife that we have in our hearts. And he turns it into peace and comfort. He takes the gloom and the sorrow in our lives. And he turns it into joy. So the Lord says this morning, you want to be blessed? I mean, you want to really be blessed? Bring me all your filthiness. All of your lies. All of your cheatings. Give it to me. And in return, I will write your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I will give you blessings in this life, and I will give you a home in heaven when you die. Amen. That's the blessing. Let's look at the second water pot. We pour in our prayers, and the Lord pours out His answer. Amen. Listen to me, friends, today when I tell you this. Prayer is real. You believe that? Prayer is not transcendental meditation. Prayer is not yoga. Prayer is not breathing exercises. Prayer is talking to God about your life. Amen? So, preacher, I have a trouble identifying that. I know I'm supposed to be a praying person. Well, here's what I want you to do. You go home and <coughs> you get along in the room, maybe a kitchen table, and you sit down in one chair and you visualize Jesus sitting in the other, and then you tell him whatever's on your heart. But get this far. You must be a praying person if you're going to receive the blessings of his answer. Amen? Amen. Oh, I love illustration in the Word of God about the power of prayer. One of my favorites is Jeremiah 33 3. The Bible says, well, I'm going to read it to you. You don't have to. But Jeremiah was locked up for preaching the gospel. He was telling the, the, the people they needed to get right with God and get rid of the sin. <coughs> And the king said, well, I'll take care of you. I'll just lock you up. You won't be able to preach anymore. So turn over with me right quick to Jeremiah 33. I'm going to read this story to you. Powerful story. Jeremiah 33, start in verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, locked up. The king thought he had him where he wanted him. Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord hath formed, hath formed thee to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call unto me. I will answer and I will show thee great and mighty works that you've never, ever seen before. Thank the Lord for his power of answering prayer. One of my favorite stories over the book of Acts. The Bible says the church was praying. It was a new church, and they would just get into the routine thing. But you see, Peter and James had been locked up, and they began praying for their release. And in the midst of the prayer meeting, God sent an angel to the jail cell. And the Bible says the angels touched the shackles, and they fell off. And God opened the door and led Peter out. And then Peter went to the house and began knocking. The Bible says they prayed continuously. And that was a never-ending prayer meeting. They just prayed and prayed and prayed, Oh, God, deliver our people, deliver our people. <coughs> There, Peter was knocking on the door. A little girl came and opened the door. Well, she knew Peter was in jail, so she slammed the door back and went and said, Who is it? Well, I, 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 it looked like Peter, so it can't be Peter because he's in jail. So they didn't even believe their own prayers. But finally, brothers and sisters, Peter kept knocking and knocking and knocking. All of a sudden, they went and found out it was Peter. He came in and said, The Lord has answered my prayers. The God has sent the angel to deliver Peter because he had work for him to do. Now, Think about your theology of prayer and then identify the next chapter. Here was James, locked up at the same time Peter was. 
God delivered Peter from prison, but he allowed James to be beheaded. You explain to me the theology of that. Now don't ask me, friends. That's, that somebody has to answer that greater than I am. So you go to heaven and you say, Why, Lord? Why in the world did God and all of His divine providence decide that Peter was going to live and James had to die? I can tell you this. It was for the glory of God. I can't explain nothing else. We really don't know. But it's in the Holy Word <coughs> of God. The Lord answers prayer. Amen? He does. There's some of you alive today because somebody prayed for you. Amen? Amen? There's some people, friends, that are in church today because somebody prayed for you. There's somebody in heaven today, friends, because somebody prayed for them. Just a little talk with Jesus. All the things that we forfeit simply because we won't put the chair down and sit and have a little talk with Jesus. Lord, I've got a burden on my heart and I need to share it. Well, go ahead and share it with me and we'll see if we can answer it. So we pour in our prayers and God pours out His answer. Thirdly, we pour in our problems and the Lord pours out His guidance. God leads His children. Amen? We sang about that a couple of weeks ago. You know, everybody ought to memorize Scripture. Do you agree with that? you believe in that? But why don't people do it? Well, there's a good verse in the Bible that you ought to memorize today and you ought to take it home with you. Right now, we're going to memorize about a Bible verse. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care on Him, for He cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. Now, they say when you remember Scripture, you always read the type of the text and then you read the text at the end. Start in the end and in the middle you have the verse. Well, we're going to try that. 1 Peter what? Y'all pay attention. Casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. Let's do it again. Some of you ain't participating. 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. Thank God that the Lord cares for us and watches over us every day. Now here's where our problems run in. God leads us. The man we show sure get in a world of trouble when we try to run ahead of God. People do it all the time, don't they? In 2018, there was a helicopter crashed over I-26 just a few uh, yards back in the woods. It killed all four passengers. The pilot, the co-pilot, the nurse, and the, and the patient. And they said, oh, what a horrible event. The th they said it, the, uh, the, the, the helicopter crashed, the life force helicopter crashed because it was too foggy for them to see. In other words, they should not have been flying. And they said, oh, what a terrible mistake. But here's the mistake. There were three other life force helicopters all around the area, Spartanburg, uh, Greenville, Augusta, that was asked to come. All three of them declined. And the reason they declined is that the weather was not permittable for flying. But somebody didn't take that. Oh, I bet you that pilot wishes over and over again, I wish I'd have listened. I wish I'd have looked at the foggy conditions. So what possesses somebody, friend, when they look and to see the signs, whether in heaven or earth, that they shouldn't do something, and they go ahead and do it? Amen. Why? Let me, let me jump in a rock patch right here. Mm -hmm. Children don't like to listen to the parents, do they? They know it all. And then when they get to be 40 or 50, they realize how smart the parents really were. Oh, listen, I know, you know, so if you tell the children, this person's not good for you, you, you shouldn't even date them, much less marry them. No, oh, no, I know what I want. You run ahead of God, you run ahead of the parish, and you marry them anyway, and all of a sudden life falls apart. If you just want to run ahead of God, if you just waited and waited and waited and listened. Here's what the Bible says. Isaiah 4, 40, 31. They that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. God help me today not to get ahead of you. I know the plans you have for me. 
No, Lord, if I could just take those plans and mold them the way I want them and walk the way I want them. Friends, you better listen to wisdom. You better listen to guidance. You better listen to understanding. Because when you don't, you know what happens? You end up like that pilot that flew in times of fog. The fourth word of thought of blessing. We pour in our sorrows, and he pours out his comfort. Job 5, 7. Friends, you want to talk about sorrows? Just read the book of Job. Man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. Now, can you imagine the picture that? That's a good object lesson. You throw a log on the fire and all of a sudden the sparks go up, you try to count them. Thousands and thousands. Well, that's our lives, isn't it? Man's life is just full of all kind of trouble from the time he's born to the time that he dies. Job 14, 16 says, Man born of a woman is full of in, is a few days and full of troubles. Oh, brothers and sisters, but if we'll pour in our sorrows, God will pour out his comfort. Or that's what I want to do. I've got plenty of them. I, the Bible says I'm going to have trouble. The Bible says there's stormy days ahead. So, Lord, I'm going to give you my troubles. You ever saw a puppy play with a, with a, with a sock? You ever seen that? Yeah, it, it, it's amazing to watch. You just get a little sock. And they'll, run, they'll run over there and they'll shake it a while. And, and they leave it alone and run over here and find something else, but they can't stay away from that stock. Got to run right back to it, shake it some more. That's us. I mean, we say, Lord, I'm going to give you all my troubles so you can give me your blessing, or I'm going to give you all my sorrow, but no, we just can't stay away from it. We're just like that little puppy. Lord, here they are. I'm going to give them to you. No, let me go over here and grab it myself. Let me see what I can do with them. No, brothers, just give them to God. There was a fellow one time that was walking down the road carrying a sack of potatoes. And a fella came alongside him at the wagon. He said, sir, would you like a ride? Or first of all, he said, where are you going? He said, I'm going to town. He said, would you like a ride? He said, I sure would. And so he jumped up beside the man and he took that sack of potatoes and set it down in his lap. The man said, he said, listen, i got an empty wagon back here. Why don't you just take the taters and put them in the wagon? He said, no, no. You gave me a ride. I'll tote the taters. That's us. That's us. That's us. Lord, I'm so happy you give me a home in heaven. Yeah, God, I'm so happy that when I die, I'm going to fly away. But Lord, down here, I'm going to carry all my troubles myself. I'm just going to carry them, Lord. I, I'm going to make sure I, that I don't have any happiness in this life. I'm going to make sure that my back is bent over from the troubles that I carry. I believe in you and your heaven, and I'm going to carry my troubles myself. When the Bible says just give them all to God, that's what he told us to do. And when we do, friends, he pours out his comfort. Amen. Psalm 55, 22. Cast thy burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be removed. There was a fellow by the name of Luther Bridges who was holding a revival in Georgia. During the middle of the revival, he had heard, heard news that there had been a house fire. His house had burned to the ground, and his wife and two children had died in the fire. He took the long world home, riding on horseback, coming back, friends, to bury his family. But on the way, brothers and sisters, God gave him a sorrow and a song in the midst of his sorrow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Thank God, brothers and sisters, if we just give God our sorrows, he'll pour out his comfort. Now, there was a scripture that I wanted to read a while ago that I did not want to, did not read when we were talking about our problem with God. So I want to go back and read it because it's so good. I want you to turn with me to 2 Samuel 5, 24. Just, just mass rewind and let's go back and talk about this, about getting ahead of God. I meant to read this and didn't do it. 2 Samuel 5, 24. I want to begin in verse 17. David had been made king of Israel. And he was wanting to go and defeat the Philistines. And he petitioned God said, God, should I go? And here's what the Lord said. But the Philistines heard that they anointed David king over Israel. And all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down into the hole. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? 
And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will now deliver the Philistines into your hand. And David came to Baal Pierre, and David spoke them there and said, The Lord has broken forth upon my enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perizim. And there they left their images, and David and his men, and burned them. And the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Rephim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Shall I not go up, but fetch a compass behind me, them, and, and, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees? And listen to what verse 24 says. And let it be so, when you hear the sound of the going of the tops of the mulberry trees, that thou shalt, uh, shalt bestir thyself, for then you shall know that the Lord has gone before thee to smite the Philistines. So I had to throw that in there. That's one of the water pots that God goes before us to answer our blessings. Amen? Amen. Give us that blessing. All right, so we poured in our uh, 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 sorrows. He poured out his comfort. Then we come to the fifth water blessing. We pour in our needs, and he pours out his supply. Philippians 4.13, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. God keeps all 33,000 promises of the word of God. That's what somebody told me there are. 33,000. But brothers and sisters, he can't bless you unless you give him something to bless you with. You see, brothers, if you give him your needs, he will pour out his blessings upon you. Malachi 3.10 Bring me all your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out you a blessing, that you shall not have room to receive. Friends, it's very plain in the Word of God. I think I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. God said in His holy Word, and it is holy, and it's the divine guidance for every generation, you cannot serve God and, and money at the same time. You just can't do that. Friend, I want to tell you, money makes a good servant, but a terrible master. Money can serve you if you will understand that you've got to put money in its place. and say, Lord, whatever you bless me with, Lord, I've got to make sure that I bless you so that you can become a blessing to other people. Amen? Amen. But here's what we do. Here's what we do. Well, Lord, got my paycheck this week. What did I do with that? There it is. Yeah, Lord, I'm just counting all my dollars and my bills. Thank you, dear God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, God, there's my green stuff. I'm going, I'm going shopping now. I'm going to buy me uh, another motorboat, another boat for my motor, another rod and reel, another shotgun, another car. I'm going to buy me something, Lord. You give me green. Oh, yeah, Lord, I forgot. I'm a Christian. So I've got to, I've got to give something to you. So here, Lord. Here, Lord, Lord, look at it. You see all that green I had? Oh, Lord. Here, look at what I'm giving you. Here, God. Here, go, Lord. How do you pay? Oh, there's a nickel, Lord. You ought to be so blessed. I'm giving you. Oh, my Lord, there's a dime. Yeah, there's a dime. And there's another nickel penny. Oh, Lord, I'm such a great giver. You're a lot of what you are. You're taking all the blessings of God and you use them for your own convenience. Amen? That's what's happening. That's what happened. Brothers, if you pour in your needs, he'll pour out his blessings. But you have to give it to him. He says, if you'll do this, if you just put me first in everything, including your money, I'll supply your needs. What are our needs? A job, a house, a car, whatever. Food on the table, a table to put the food on, whatever. If we put God first, he supplies our needs. Now, that's simple, ain't it? You don't need a living Bible to understand that. You don't need a modern English Bible to understand that, brother. You can get blessed out of the King James Bible. Right there. God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. Amen. If you learn, if you learn to make money your servant and not your master. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, our last blessing. We pour in our future and He pours out His heaven. Brothers and sisters, this is the sweetest wine of all. Wouldn't it be terrible if all we had to look forward to was a cold, cold grave? How horrible that would be. 
Now I've never been to Israel, but I understand in the catacombs where they, where the loved ones, the Christians, had to bury their families because they weren't allowed to uh, uh, mingle up on top, and they weren't allowed to bury them in, in the Jewish cemeteries. So they buried, carve out a hole in the ground, and they would seal up the hole of the loved one, and then what they would do is they put an ichthus on it. The ichthus meant this was a Christian. That was a sign of a Christian back in the days, friends, of the persecution of the early church. Uh, and some of them would have effigies on it, asleep in Jesus. That's where all that came from. Not our cemetery, but way back yonder, friends. People had a hope and a meaning that when they died, there was something beyond the sufferings that they had in this world. Paul said it better than anybody. He said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present age are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be in eternity. It's real sad. Sometimes the only time you ever hear about funer uh, uh, heaven is at funerals. But old brothers and sisters, we all make a much about heaven. That's our eternal home. That's where we're going when our die. That's our hope. And so we live for that. Amen. When I was going to school, I became good friends with a Methodist pastor. His name was Pete. Pete pastored the church in, in Liberty, South Carolina. Liberty United Methodist Church. And while we were going to school, he said, Kim, why don't you come preach for me one Sunday? So, okay. And uh, I went to his church and I preached. After the service, we were going to the parking lot. Now, I already knew about his trouble, but he didn't know that I knew. He said, you know, Brother Kim, he was a lot older than me. He said, Brother Kim, you know, I'm terminal. He was dying from cirrhosis of the liver. You could tell it by looking at his face and his eyes and all that got jaundiced. I just put my arm around Pete and I said, Brother Pete, we're all terminal. Every one of us is going to leave this world. And our destination is determined by our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's our hope. John 14, 1 through 3. The Lord said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And as I go and prepare this place, one day I'm going to come and get you and you can go and live with me for all of eternity. Friends, if you'll give God your future today, He in turn will give you His heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. The story is told about a, an atheist who died. He didn't have any friends or relatives, but they had his funeral in the, service, in the church, dressed him up in a nice suit, and there he was laying in the casket, and they closed it, they put him in the ground, they raised money to put a tombstone on his marker, and he didn't have any friends, and somebody suggested, said, what are we going to put on the tombstone? And finally, they decided what to put. All dressed up and no place to go. Oh, brothers, that's not me. I have a heaven when I leave this world. And I'm getting closer and closer. I've done the math. I'm closer to heaven than I am my birthday. Isn't that true? True about a lot of you. True about a lot of you. But, oh, brothers, heaven is heaven. And heaven is real. And heaven is sweet. And heaven's in my future. And it can be in your future, too. You would just humbly bow at the foot of the cross and by faith cry out unto Jesus and said, Lord, save me. It don't matter what you say. If you just cry out unto God and said, Lord, I need you in my life, he'll come in and he'll bless you for the future that cannot ever be denied. Do you know him today? Stay with me, please. Here's the battle I still This Judy is going to come and lead us in the soul. I want the musicians to come they would be prepared to sing. What blessing are you missing today? What blessing have you not given to the Lord? Would you this day say, Lord, there's something missing in my life. Maybe you're a young man, young woman. You come to this church a while, but you've never came and given your life to Christ. You never followed him in baptism. Come this morning. Make that commitment to Christ that you know you need. Make heaven a surety in your life. If you have needs in your life, you're burdened down, you carry that sack of taters, come give them to God this morning. He's got a wagon that'll haul all the potatoes you want to haul. Come give them to God. Let's say it. Page 272, if you're following along in the book.
to sing any more verses, but we're all going to tear you. You just, you just play through that verse one more time. Just that last verse. No singing. May the Holy Spirit move upon every heart in this place today. We're afraid without the Spirit of God, you know, we're just a social gathering. And I pray that right now, you can listen to this voice of these speaks.